Hello again. I'm back for um, Pencils versus Copics round two. Here we have a cute little gnome card. I'm going to start off with pencils here. Um, I'm going to take and color in the peach first. And I try to do the face whenever I color um, first because I think it helps bring the character to life and see things a little bit more clearly. Let me make sure. There we go. Um, now, unfortunately, with pencils, I don't think they are as nice as Copic for faces. That is the one complaint I have. So that, that is a sad thing. But I definitely think with it, something this small and how the face is, you can get away with it. One thing I do, and when I have to make a lot of cards for a craft show or whatever reason, sometimes I will just use one peach marker so it doesn't stand out real well for my Copics and color the face and then color the rest of it with um, my pencils. And I think that works out really well too. So there's ways around it and you can, you know, do do as you wish and what you like. I am going to take my Gamsol and I am going to go over this. Not because it's going to blend it a whole lot. There's not a lot of pigment in these peach pencils. But what it does is get rid of the pencil lines, which, you know, I don't know. Those kind of drive me nuts. So... I appreciate when those can kind of disappear. So there we go. We have a face on our gnome now. And I want to be consistent with what we did in class. So I'm going to take a blue pencil and around the bottom here, I'm going to swirl on some color onto his hat and along the brim here. Now in my mind, there's a brim on this hat, but uh, several people colored this without a brim. They just made the whole thing one color. And honestly, when I saw it, it looked pretty awesome. So I I say, yay, um, do that. So it, it, I, you know, I wouldn't, I, that's one thing I love about teaching classes is I get to see what everybody does and uh, it, it looked pretty awesome. And you know what? It actually makes them look less Christmassy. That's one thing with gnomes. Sometimes they look too Christmassy and I want them to look, you know, this guy has nothing to do with Christmas. So, all right. So now I'm taking some Gamsol and I'm going to use it to drag and smooth out my blue. And I find this very therapeutic. I love... This calms me down. I have two little munchkins that I love, but I'm so glad when they go to bed. And this is a very nice way to relax after the day is over. So now obviously that's too much white, at least in my mind. So I'm just going to come in now, and this is very light because I want to be able to control the pigment. I'm putting on a little bit more blue, and so this way I can drag that up. I don't want to get rid of all of my highlight. I just want to lessen my highlight. And do a little bit more. And this is personal preference on how much you like. I mean, maybe you really thought that was enough, you know, that was a good highlight, so I don't know. I kind of wish I didn't do as much right there, but that's okay. I still think it's there. I can still see a highlight. Maybe I've got his bum highlighted just a bit too much, so we'll add. There we go. So now we have a cute little gnome hat. Look at him. Awesome. All right, so we're going to put our blue pencil away. And let's grab some cool grays. At least in my mind, um, the gnomes, I really like with the, the cool gray um, beards. But again, I saw students making brown gnome beards, and I thought that was really cool. So there you go. So here I am just swirling on some really light gray. And I'm going to blend this out. And I'm doing this because I want to take the white. That's all I'm trying to do is take the white out of the paper. Because, oh, that wasn't very much. There we go. I'm just trying to make it look different than the paper we stamped on. So we're just tinting, if you will. 
And I'm not worried about getting every pencil line out because it's hair and I color, you always color in the direction. So I kept my lines going this way. Uh-oh. Try not to catch any of that blue. I just cut a little bit into my beard. I think I can, I'm going to take my eraser and see if I can clean that up. That's okay. It's not great, but it's okay. All right, so now that we have that, I'm going to come in with a darker gray. And in the direction that the beard grows, I'm going to start putting in some lines. I'm going to try to put one right here through that blue. And I try to aim, you always go in, like I said, in the direction of the hair growth. You want them to vary in length. And sometimes doing like little V's gives like a fold in the hair so it's kind of nice. And if you want, you can blend these out a little bit. I'm going to blend some of it out. I don't want to go too nuts. But I think I put a lot in. So I am going to blend a few out. And so I like the mixture of the lines and the, you know, the, just the gray texture. Um, I think that's okay. What do you guys think? I like to play. You guys, I don't know, you could have called it quits. There, I think that looks good. So I kind of get to a point, I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm done. So there we go. So now um, I'm going to come in here with some, I've got some like reddish brown. And one of the cool things I love about pencils is you have such great control that I like to put a little, leave a little bit of white and then I'm going to take up these wing shapes here a little bit. I just think it adds a little bit more definition to the bird and some interest. And now I'm going to start pulling on some color here around. I'm going to add some color here on the, the wings. Let me see what I got here. There we go. So now I can take and go ahead and blend this out. Now those lines may fade out, but I can put them back in very easily. So I'm just trying to add some reddish brown. I'm kind of going for a robin. You could do a bluebird. You could do a cardinal. I don't think you can go wrong. I was kind of just going for like a reddish, reddish brown. So I'm going to come back in here and I'm just going to put those lines in. I don't want them to be, you know, the first thing your eye sees. It's kind of like an afterthought there. So... There we go. I love I love the texture in there. I love how that turned out. So I'm going to leave that alone. Okay, so I'm going to come in here. This is like um and I'm afraid it's a little too close to the reddish brown, but I think we can make it work. So let's go ahead and blend that out. Oh, I think it's going to work. So there we go. And I'm going to put a little bit of red on the end of it. I have no idea if robins do or don't, but just because it's fun, I'm putting a little red on his tail. And I love how seamlessly these pencils blend together. How fun is that? How cute is he? And while we're here, I'm just going to take a teensy bit of yellow and make his beak yellow. So we have the grass to do, and we have his little fuzzy hat. Just like the elephant, we're going to kind of come in here and I'm going to lightly, and do you see how I'm kind of drying? I want the ground to be uneven because grass, when you look at it, isn't all the same color. So I'm kind of like putting these little zigzags or like, I don't know, in there. And I'm going to come in here with a lighter green and kind of fade those out. So it's darker right underneath him, and then lighter as you get closer to the viewer. 
and then we can blend that out and if we need to we can come back and add more if we don't we're good right we got we got what we need so we want it to be varied and again try not to get it into your gnome it's easy to to drag things to places you didn't mean to and that just kind of adds some interesting little, you know, view to the grass. And I feel like I have more on this side than this side. So I'm just bringing a little bit in here. Just so it feels less, you know, uneven. I don't want necessarily to feel that. Now, one of the things I like to do when this is all done and you have like a base coat is I like to come in here and kind of do a few, you don't have to go nuts, but you're kind of just putting in a few blades of grass. And I just think that helps add some interest. You can also put a couple like just dots, just breaks it up a little bit and helps make it look a little bit more like grass. So now we have him grounded. So for his um, little, what do you call that, like a brim on his hat, I'm going to use a cream pencil and around the edges I am going to add in some pigment but I'm not going to, I. I don't want to go too nuts and I'm not going to lie to you this is where Copic the detail that you can get in here with Copic is way nicer than what you can get with pencil they both have their pros and cons this is definitely a, a pro for the Copic so I'm going to put in a little bit of texture just that way and blending and it looks like it belongs I don't know if you can even see that it's really light so this is how I get around that because I just think that's kind of boring I this is my favorite solution is I come in with my two-way glue pen and I try to put down a good thick coating of that and I like to take glitter and this now makes it interesting and this is, I tend to do this a lot more with pencils than I do with um, my Copics because now look at how cool that is. It just adds life to this where I couldn't get very good texture with a pencil just by the nature of it. My skin tones. And again, as I said before, his skin is very minimal. But I'm just going to come in like this and color this up with, um, this is E000. And because he has so little skin, I can kind of do this all at once. E11 is really light too, but it just kind of adds a little shadow. And I'm going to put some on the bottom of his nose, along the edge of his feet. And then I'm going to use E11 to blend that out. And I'm going to just go back in with my E000. And finish blending that out and because I don't know why I'm just gonna add a little bit of pink on his nose I just feel like that's appropriate gives him a little I guess because you can't really give him cheeks you got to give him a rosy little nose I don't know all right so for the hat I'm gonna do it in blues again I'm coming in with B18 and I'm doing like these little flicks up into his hat and I'm just doing a little bit because I don't want to go too nuts go around the edges here and I'm going to create an edge to his hat because I don't know I see that and I see a brim but like I said in the last card I don't think it matters if you can do it any color you want and it's totally fine so now I'm using my B16 to push and blend out that B18 and B18 is is dark so it you know it, it is harder to blend out B16 is dark. Well, now I'm coming in with B14. Pushing that up as well. And then I'm going to come in with B12. Now look how much lighter B12 is. We're going to have to go back in and re-blend, but that's okay. 
So I'm going to come back in with B14 and help that blend out a little bit. And now we can come in with B12. And because that's really wet, we're going to let that dry. We're going to go ahead and do his bum. And we'll do a teeny bit of this dark blue whoosh on his pants. Let's fill that in. Going around the edges of his beard. And we got B14. And then just a teensy bit on his bum of B12. So there we go. So we've got some awesome blues there. I love how that turned out. All right, for his beard, um, this I think is a lot easier with Copics than it is with pencil. I like to start around the nose and I like to put in several of these little things of like wispies. And this is C3 and I'm not gonna do much of this. This does give his beard shape but it also makes his beard really dark. So I'm kind of just following the contour of his beard and just putting in a few of those. And then I'm gonna come in with C1, which is much lighter, and I'm gonna put in much more. And around his face and whatnot, I feel like it should be darker. So I'm kind of filling that in with C1. And then I'm going to come in with C0 and I'm going to add more. His beard is actually harder to color than most gnomes. Because he's laying down, it's harder to envision, I think, how to make it lay. But I think that looks pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. So we're going to leave that be. So E17, E15, and E13. And now we're going to look at this bird again. And I'm going to try to do the same thing. I'm going to come in here and just leave a little. I just like those little details. And then put in a, a few little lines here where I think his wing would be. And I'm going to start flicking in along the back of his neck. And then I tried to pick some reddish browns again. And I'm going to come in with E15 and then push those out. And then E13 to finish blending them out. Okay. Now I'm going to let that dry for just a second. While that's drying, I'm going to get RO5 and RO2. And I'm going to put a little bit of RO5 on his belly, and I'm going to use RO2 to blend that out. And I'm doing this while this is still wet so that the reds and the browns will blend together. And because this brown has so much red in it, I think they blend together so nicely. I, um you don't have to worry if you're kind of just a beginner at this. It works out pretty well. I'm not too happy with how my RO5 blended in, so I'm going in a little bit. There we go. Needed a little bit more RO5 to get that belly going. Now that that brown is a smidgen drier than it was a second ago, I'm going to come back in and put couple of those detail lines back. I really like how those look on the wing. It gives it shape and gives it a little detail. So there we go. And just to finish this little bird off, we're going to put a little bit of E15 in his nose. And I'm going to flick that in on the bottom of his hat and also to the top towards the center. You want to be really careful not to catch that blue because it will drag it in there. And I can put E40 away. And I'm going to let that dry while I color 
the ground here. And this is where I think Copics really shine too. I think they do better when it comes to adding texture. I think Copics do a little better than pencil, but pencils are definitely easier. So where he is laying, I'm putting down G46 and I'm using G43 to bring that down a little bit. And then I'm going to add down G40. So it was G46, G43, and then G40. Now we're going to do this with the hat as well. So I'm going to set these down. Now we're going to bounce back to the hat because I want these to dry a little bit. And I'm going to grab E42. And E42 is just a shade darker and I'm going to start putting in because I imagine his hat's all squished right he's got his hat head in there and it's mashing it down so they're going to be very close to together we're going to have a little bit here and a little bit around his face so we've got a couple little dots we've added now let's go back and bounce back to our grass and we're going to do the same thing so I'm going to take the mid-tone which is the G43 and I'm going to kind of randomly pounce in some dots and this is really adding texture and giving the grass some interest so we can put g43 away and we'll wait we'll, we'll wait on g43 now i'm going to get um e43 so we're hopping up one more da shade darker we're going to make our dots smaller because we're in a darker color And there's going to be less of them. Now I'm going to go in with G46 and we're going to do the same thing. This is a darker color, so we're going to put less dots and smaller. You can also put a couple in the grass. I put like little V's or flicks in the grass. I think that helps. Cool. I think the grass looks great and done, so I'm going to call that done. I'm going to come in with E44, the last color for the hat. And this is the darkest, so they're going to be the smallest. And there's going to be less of them. This is the most smushed of the fibers in his hat. And this is how I do Santa hats. It's one of my favorite little details. I don't know. It just makes it look so cool, I think. Now, the one thing I um, forgot to do on the blue is I like to take uh, C6 on blues. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to add C6. And it's going to add a shadow right to where he's laying. And I think it deepens that blue a little bit. Just adds a teensy bit more interest. So here are two panels. I'm going to finish them off into cards and then we can see which one we like better. All right, so here we have Copic versus colored pencil again. So what do you guys think? Who wins this battle, pencils or Copic? Um, I love to hear what your thoughts are. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. This was a lot of fun, I think. Um, it's very rare that I get to color um, the same image with both pencil and Copic and compare them and see how, see how they look. Um, I look forward to hearing your favorites and I'll see you guys on the next video.